Uh, today, the Apostle Paul is showing, showing us what it means to have a true and full Christian life. He's showing us what it means to have a genuine Christian life in this world. What it means to have the power of God at work in your life now. He's showing us what it really means to to be a full, living Christian. The kind of Christian life that gets the Apostle Paul himself excited and burst into thanks for. And this is what he's doing in this passage that we've just read. So so look at verse 3. He's writing to the church in Colossae, which is kind of modern-day Turkey. Uh, And this is how he opens the letter, verse 3. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Uh, This is a great church. Uh, A church Paul can't help but give thanks for. Uh, Look how he describes this church in verse 2. He writes it, To the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae. Uh, These are faithful Christians, true Christians, Christians living a full Christian life. Uh, And in this letter to the Colossians, uh, Paul is assuring these Christians that they really are living uh, a full Christian life. Uh, There's been teaching going around uh, in this church in their area, teaching, uh, saying that that, that they're only living kind of a, a half Christian life. And there are other things to do to kind of top up to top it up to have a full Christian life. Uh, And so they've they've been hearing, you're all missing out on something. You need these extra things, extra ceremonies and laws and disciplines, things to do in your life, all these extra things, then you'll have a proper, true Christian life. And so Paul writes this letter to say, no, what you have now, Christian, what you have now means that you do have a full Christian life. You're not missing out on anything. Uh, Paul gets out his spiritual x-ray and shows us inside what is in, what's inside of every true and full Christian life. Yeah. And as we look at this x-ray, we see three things. We see a full Christian life has faith, love, and the gospel. Uh, and this is the big thing to see today. A full Christian life has faith faith, love, and the gospel. Uh, This is the big thing to see today. Uh, And so, if you x-ray a Christian living a full life, a true Christian life, a life that the Apostle Paul gets excited about and gives thanks for, a life pleasing to the Lord Jesus, it has these three essential things. Faith, love, and the gospel. You have these you have the full Christian life. And we're going to zoom in on on each of these three things today in the x-ray. And so the first thing to see is this. A full Christian life has faith. So look look at verses 3 and 4 with me. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus. I wonder what you give thanks to God about. We have lots to give thanks to God about, don't we? Food, he provides us, clothes, our friends. Well, here's an insight into Paul's prayer life, into what an apostle gets excited about. The apostle Paul, (coughs) a man sent by the Lord Jesus to lay the foundation for the global church, to bring the gospel to the nations, an apostle to bring the revelation of God to the world, Uh, the writer of a quarter of the New Testament, who performs miracles and has seen remarkable things, this is what he prays about. We always thank God when we pray for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus. He thanks God because these Christians have faith in Jesus. This is what Paul, the apostle, is excited about. This is what he cares about. Not how big the church is. He doesn't mention that. Not how many programs they're running. Not how well they sing. Not how disciplined they are. No. He says, I always thank God in my prayers because you trust in Jesus Christ. You believe in the Son of God. You have faith in his death and resurrection to save you. You know he's coming again. 
You follow him every day. You trust in his word. I thank God always that you, Christian, you have faith in Christ Jesus. This is what matters in Paul's mind. This is what makes that full Christian life. This is the real heart of the Christian life. This is the big thing on the x-ray we see. Faith. And it's not fancy to the world. It's not flash. But it makes an apostle punch in the air. Faith in the Lord Jesus. It it can be easy to think that that if we don't have certain gifts, or or if we don't do certain things in church life, or, or if we're not that type of Christian over there, it can be easy to think that, that we're kind of subpar Christians. Like if we don't know how to pray out loud very well. Or if we struggle to host lots of people. Or, or if we can't offer a lot in service. Or, or if we don't have lots of Bible knowledge. Then we, we kind of feel like we're not full Christians. Like we're half Christians in some way like we're missing out on something spiritually, like we're not living the full Christian life. We think we're nothing to get excited about. Well, what does Paul say here? If you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that is astonishing. That is something to thank God for always. That's something to get excited about. That is the grace of God at work in your life. That, that's the power of God in your heart. Your faith is a remarkable thing. If you're here today and you have faith in Christ Jesus, that is a remarkable thing. No matter how small your faith is, no matter how shaky your faith is, no matter how new your faith is, your faith is a remarkable work of God in your life. And it means... You, all of you, you belong to Jesus. And you have all the blessings that are in Christ. You're not missing out on some secret thing. You aren't a half Christian. You aren't a 90% Christian. No, you have the full Christian life. A full Christian life has faith. Simple, straightforward faith. Faith in Christ Jesus It's what unites us all as Christians. From the smallest Christian in the corner of London to the biggest names in church history, what unites us all? We all have one faith in the one Saviour. And that's what matters. That is at the heart of every Christian life. That's what makes an apostle give thanks for. That's what makes a full Christian life. Nothing flash, nothing fancy. It's faith. A full Christian life has faith. But Paul also says, faith is never alone. Paul gives thanks for their faith, and he gives thanks for their love. That's my second point today. Second thing to see. A full Christian life has love. So look at verse 3 again. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints. This is what Paul loves to hear about. This is what Christ loves to see in his church. Christians loving other Christians. A church that loves each other. And that's what he means uh, when he says the love that you have for all the saints. He, he doesn't mean Roman Catholic saints. No, he just means saints just means normal Christians. Those who are made holy by Jesus. It, it's us. And so what is Paul saying here? I always thank God that you Christians love each other. Now we don't know exactly what this church is doing, uh, but we can definitely picture it, can't we? You can imagine the type of things Paul gives thanks for. I thank God because you make meals for families that have just had a baby. I thank God that you always offer a spare room to someone in need. I thank God that you are so keen to host people on Sunday lunch. 
I thank God that you're so quick to seek for forgiveness but when there's an argument in the church. I thank God that you all weep together and gather round each other when there's a death in the church. I thank God that you always pray for each other. I always thank God because of the love that you have for all the saints. That's what Paul gets excited about. That's what matters. But when you have faith in the Lord Jesus, that always flows out in love for each other. A full Christian life has love. And again, it's not flash, is it? In fact, it's often unnoticed. Love can often seem quite small. It can seem simple and ordinary. Just like sending a text of encouragement. It just seems so ordinary, doesn't it? But what's the reality? That's huge. It's not complicated, but it's beautiful. It's powerful. That makes an apostle burst out in a prayer of thanksgiving. That love is God's work in your life. That love is Christ transforming his church. That love is salvation in action. Real Christianity, it's not the flash stuff on stage, it's not the impressive stuff writing books, it's the nitty gritty, day to day, in the trenches of life, loving each other. That is a full Christian life. And when Christians love each other, it's a heavenly love. Look at verse 5. You love each other because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. This love is not earthly. We aren't a social club that just gets on really well. No, all this love flows from the fact that we have faith in the Lord Jesus and we have a future hope the hope of eternal life. It's an otherworldly, divinely given love. The love we we have for each other, it crosses nationalities, doesn't it? It crosses ages and backgrounds and classes. Our faith unites us all in a supernatural way, and so does our love. So if you x-ray a true Christian life, you see love. A full Christian life has love. But there's one final thing on the x-ray. A full Christian life has the gospel. Uh, Look at the rest of verse 5. Of this, he's talking about hope, of this hope you have heard before in the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you as indeed in the whole world is bearing fruit and growing, as it also does among you since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth. Where did all this faith and love come from? How did it all happen? It's when they heard the gospel. When the gospel goes out, the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ from sin, death and hell, when the Bible is opened up and that message is preached and declared, that message has power. It goes into people's hearts and minds and lives and it changes them. You see, it it bears fruit. The fruit of salvation in your life. Uh, My dad likes his gardening. You can speak to him afterwards about it. Uh, uh, And in the summer, uh, my dad uh, used miracle grow or grass feed on the grass. And so you put the miracle feed in in water and then you, you water the grass uh, and the grass starts to, to grow up really full uh, and, and a really long grass. But my dad ran out halfway across the lawn, ran out of miracle growth. Uh, and so you have half the lawn full of thick, long grass, and then half the, half the garden is dead yellow mush. Uh, and so you, you can see when the miracle grow went out. Uh, the grass is better now, I think, than back in the summer. Uh, but you can think of the gospel like miracle grow. Uh, Without Christ, our lives are are dry and dying wastelands. But when the gospel goes out, it produces life, fruit. Faith and love start to grow. Uh, The gospel goes out and it makes full Christian lives. A full Christian life has the gospel. 
And as you get older, it's not a more complicated or different gospel for you that, that you get at a different stage of life. There's not a secret gospel that you need to that you need to know to make you a full Christian when you're a bit more advanced. No. The same gospel goes out to the young and old and throughout your whole life. And that same gospel bears fruit. Look at the end of verse 6. The gospel is bearing fruit in the whole world. And Paul says, as it also does among you. Now, since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth. The same gospel when they were first saved. And the same gospel for them today. A, a full Christian life has the gospel and holds on to that same gospel every day. This is what Paul is excited about. They received the gospel and, and they're still holding on to it. That they're living the true Christian life. So it's really not the case that, that you need, you just need the gospel to be saved and then you kind of move on from it in the Christian life. No. You need it every day. You need to hear the forgiveness of sins in Jesus. We need the grace of God preached to us every Sunday. We need to hold that simple but powerful message in our hearts every day. You take the gospel away, you become like that dying grass. But you have the gospel, you have true Christianity. You x-ray the full Christian life, and there in the very heart of it, is the gospel. And if you're not a Christian here today, uh, this is Christianity. Uh, This is the full Christian life. Uh, There isn't a secret meeting uh, afterwards, later on, where you become a real Christian. Uh, There isn't another method we're holding back from, and we'll give it to you at some point. No. This is it. Uh, The Lord Jesus saves sinners. Uh, And if you trust in him, uh, when you have faith in Christ Jesus, he saves you for a hope laid up in heaven. And he transforms your life now. He brings you into the church, into a people that love each other. Faith, love, the gospel. These three things make up a full Christian life. This is the power of God in your life. Don't ever think you're missing out on something. This is what it means to be a Christian. This is the full Christian life. So let's always give thanks to God. Let me pray.